Welcome to the Three Rivers Public Library District's Little Diggers Summer Storytime. This is week seven, and our bucket prize will appear in just a little bit. Hello everyone, it's Miss Renee. Let's begin with our welcome song, Hello Friends. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. There are so many wonderful books at the library that sometimes it's really hard to choose just two or three. So today's story time, we're going to have four stories, but feel free to choose which ones are most appropriate for you. We will be using a shaker today. So I made my colored rice. I put it into a little plastic Easter egg. And that's going to be my shaker today. If you don't have this, you can use a jar with some beans in it, or you can use a rattle, or anything that you'd love to shake. Um, we'll also use, we'll also have a little bit of a, some drumming at the, for our last story. So if you have some rhythm sticks or some wooden spoons, you can use those to bang. Um, if you have maybe a train whistle or something like this, it'll be fun for our story. And last but not least, if you have a fun drum, you can drum along with our last story. So we'll begin soon with our very first story. Our first story is Are You the Pirate Captain? by Garrett P. Jones and Gary Parsons. The pirate ship will be ready, hollered First Mate Hugh. We've hammered nails, chipped off the snails, and even washed the crew. We've mopped and swabbed and scrubbed it. We've cleaned the crow's nest out. There's one thing, though, before we go that we can't do without. We need a pirate captain to lead us on this trip, to make demands, shout out commands, and not take any lip. We all recall our last one, the scurvy sea dog Sid, never beaten till he got eaten by that giant squid. The pirates sat there waiting till first mate Hugh cried, Look, you see that guy who's rowing by? His left hand is a hook. Are you the pirate captain? Your hook is quite a sight. Was it a shark that left its mark in some almighty fight? The man said, I am no pirate. This here's a pleasure boat. And what you took to be a hook is a hanger for my coat. Huh. The next chap had a parrot. Hugh yelled, it must be fate. In fact, I'll bet this pirate's pet will squawk pieces of eight. Are you the pirate captain? Not at all, young fellow. How absurd. It's clear this bird is part of my umbrella. Along the docks, a man held a scroll, torn down the fold. Our map, our missing scrap of treasure map, it's sure to lead to gold. Are you the pirate captain? Our map clutched in your fist. This ain't no map, replied the chap. This here's me shopping list. Then in the gloom, they spotted a glistening silver blade, two gold teeth, and underneath, a beard tied in a braid. Are you the pirate captain? Sadly, no, me hearty. This pirate gear I'm wearing here is for a dress-up party but let me help you find one with courage, brains, and heart. You'll need one who will lead your crew and not just look the part. Who got this ship all shipshape? Who organized the crew? Who mopped the sails, removed the snails? Who, I ask you, who? The pirates had the answer. We know what we must do. We've all agreed. The one to lead is Pirate Captain Hugh. Yes, Hugh's the pirate captain. He's clever, brave, and bold. So raise a cheer for a buccaneer with a heart of solid gold. The end. Our next story is Imogene's Antlers by David Small.
On Thursday, when Imogene woke up, she found she had grown antlers. Getting dressed was difficult, and going through the door now took some thinking. Imogene started down for breakfast, but got hung up. Oh, Imogene's mother fainted away. The doctor poked and prodded and scratched his chin. He could find nothing wrong. The school principal glared at Imogene, but had no advice to offer. Her brother Norman consulted the encyclopedia and then announced that Imogene had turned into a rare form of miniature elk. Imogene's mother fainted again and was carried upstairs to bed. Imogene went into the kitchen. Lucy, the kitchen maid, had her sit by the oven to dry some towels. Lovely antlers, said Lucy. The cook, Mrs. Perkins, gave Imogene a donut, then decked her out with several more and sent her into the garden to feed the birds. You'll be lots of fun to decorate come Christmas, said Mrs. Perkins. I think the birds are having a good time. Later, Imogene wandered upstairs. She found the whole family in Mother's bedroom. Donuts, anyone? she asked. Her mother said, Imogene, we have decided there is only one thing to do. We must hide your antlers under a hat. Norman telephoned the milliner. The milliner, the milliner is a word for a hat maker. At three o'clock, the milliner arrived. Rapidly, he sketched a few designs, then set to work. Voila, said the milliner. Bravo, bravissimo, cried his assistants. Thud, Imogene's mother had to be carried away once more. After dinner, Imogene practiced her piano lesson. Then yawning, she folded her music, kissed the family, and went to bed. Imogene sighed, remembering the long, eventful day. On Friday, when Imogene woke up, the antlers had disappeared. When she came down to breakfast, the family was overjoyed to see her back to normal until she came into the room. The end. So here we have five elephants in a bathtub. Let's count our elephants. One, two, three, four, five. So for our finger play, let's make swimming hands because our elephants are gonna go swimming in the bathtub. There's going to be a knock at the door, two claps, one, two, and they're going to go splash, splash with your hands on your legs. So ready? We'll start with one elephant in the bathtub. One elephant in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. Two elephants in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. Three elephants in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. Ooh, four elephants in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. Five, five elephants in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash. They all fell in. Our five elephants in the bathtub really get us ready for this next story. It's Should I Share My Ice Cream by Mo Willems. Ice cream is one of my favorite foods. Is it yours too? Ice cream, get your ice cream for a hot day. Oh boy, ice cream. One ice cream, please. Here you go. Oh boy, oh boy, I love ice cream. Wait, Piggy loves ice cream too. 
Piggy is my best friend. Should I share my ice cream with her? Should I share my awesome, yummy, sweet, super great, tasty, nice, cool ice cream? What would you do? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe Piggy does not like this flavor. Sharing a flavor Piggy does not like would be wrong. I will eat the ice cream. Wait, Piggy will like this flavor. It is very yummy. I will share my ice cream. It will not be easy. Hey, Piggy is not here. She does not know I have ice cream. <laughs> I will eat the ice cream. Where is Piggy? What if she is sad somewhere? I must find her. There's Piggy. When I do, I will say, would you like some of my ice cream? Then she will say, thank you, that would cheer me up. Then I will give her my ice cream to share. Yum. Then my best friend will be happy. I will do it. I will share my ice cream. No! Now Piggy cannot have any of my ice cream. Now I cannot have any of my ice cream. I blew it. I think Elephant is sad. <gasps> Who's coming? I see Piggy with some ice cream. You look sad. Would you like some of my ice cream? Thank you. That would cheer me up. Yum. <laughs> that was not my plan. Oh well, this works too. The end. I hope you share some ice cream with a friend today. It's time for our shaker song. This is Shake Your Shaker in the Air. So if you have your shaker or a jar of beans or something else, this is a good time to grab it. Okay, are you ready? Shake your shaker in the air. Shake it here, shake it there. Shake your shaker in the air. Shake your shaker. Shake it high and shake it low. Shake it yes, shake it no. Shake it high and shake it low. Shake your shaker. Shake it up and shake it down. Rub your shaker on the ground. Shake it up and shake it down. Shake your shaker. Shake it near and shake it far. Drive your shaker like a car. Try shake it near and shake it far. Shake your shaker. Shake it fast and shake it slow. Shake it stop, shake it go. Shake it fast and shake it slow. Shake your shaker, yay! Our last story is Poco and the Drum by Matthew Forsythe. If you have your shaker or your drum or your rhythm sticks, any instrument that you have at all, this would be a good time to have it, and you can play along in the band with Poco. The biggest mistake Poco's parents ever made was giving her a drum. They had made mistakes before. Like the slingshot. And the llama. and the balloon. But the drum 
was the biggest mistake. We shouldn't have given her that drum, said her father. What, said her mother, the drum is too loud. I can't hear you. The drum was a big mistake, said her father. That sounds like a wonderful idea, said her mother, who still couldn't hear what he was saying. The next day, her father said, Poco, why don't you take your drum outside for a little while? But don't make too much noise. We're just a little frog family that lives in a mushroom, and we don't like drawing attention to ourselves. Poco agreed, and she set out as quietly as she could. It had just rained, and the forest was sparkling like an emerald. And it was very quiet. Too quiet. Poco started tapping on her drum, but just to keep herself company. But something stirred beside her. A raccoon playing a banjo started following her, so Poco hit her drum louder. And then a rabbit playing a trumpet started following them, but Poco kept playing her drum. And then a wolf, who really couldn't play anything, but was very happy to be near the music, joined in. And Poco still played her drum. But then the wolf ate the rabbit and Poco stopped playing her drum and faced the wolf and said, no more eating band members or you're out of the band. I'm sorry, said the wolf, and he meant it. And then they all started playing again, and soon there was a crowd of animals playing instruments. And a crowd of animals following them around and enjoying the music. And they were all following Poco. Poco, your dinner is ready, shouted her father. No one answered, but he could hear music in the distance. And the music grew louder. And louder. Until the crowd swept through the house and carried Poco's parents off into the woods. Oh no, said her father. Oh dear, said her mother. I think that Poco's down in front, said her father. And you know what? What, said her mother, who was just getting to the best part of her book. I think she's pretty good. And no one could hear what he was saying, but if they could, they would have all agreed. The end. I hope you had fun playing along in our band. Thank you for joining me these seven weeks for Little Digger's Summer Storytime. It's time to sing our final goodbye, and we're also going to add if you're happy and you know it at the end. So here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, 
Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! And guess what's in our bucket this week?